What's going on guys? Off the Brink TV here bringing you another video. This time, the My Korea tutorial series episode 5 defense. So a big issue with I guess superstar and hall of fame is losing really really badly and the other team or the computer hitting a lot of their shots. And I could tell you right that uh, right now that a reason for that is because of poor defense. And that's really all it is because if you play good defense, it also makes your offense better because you gain momentum and you're able to win a lot more games. Now I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm the best player in the world because I had the same problems. When I first started or booted up NBA 2K15, I thought I was gonna be able to jump right into Hall of Fame and be as good as I was last year. And that wasn't the case, because a lot of things changed. I was throwing my controller, I was super mad, the computer was hitting non-stop shots, so I said, hold on a second, let me take a step back, let me lower the difficulty, because I am playing absolutely terribly, my team is playing terrible, and I have to do something about it. So, yeah, I ranted and said, yeah, I, I whined a bit. However, I lowered the difficulty down to All-Star and worked my way back up to Hall of Fame. And I learned all the new tricks and all the new mechanics in NBA 2K15 on both ends of the floor. And that allowed me to really, really excel at Hall of Fame difficulty. And now, these are the settings that I'm playing at. Hall of Fame, default. And I'm going to hopefully give you some tips that I learned along the way that really helped me on defense and helped me learn how to make big stops that can gain momentum in your favor on the other end of the court. So besides the gameplay settings, let me show you what I have for my controller settings. And I used the defensive assistant strength and box out assist strength at 50. And I, I use automatic shot contest set to always. And I really like it at always because when you forget to use the right analog stick or you forget to intense D, he might not throw up the shot contest. And I like that to be a good fallback option for me. So without further ado, let's get into some examples because I can't show you this stuff in the gym. And you can really get a good perspective of what I do and how I'm able to make the stops that I do make. Now what I always do when the player that I'm defending has the ball, I hold the left and right trigger. The left trigger puts yourself in that defensive stance and the right trigger it means you're turboing. I only really like to do that when the player has the ball because it's hard to catch up to players when they know. Now notice, notice how I have one foot in the lane. Now I'm not playing the passing lane here because he has too much of an ability to drive if he gets the ball and I miss the pick. Now keep in mind, see, now I go into the paint to help and Ginobili misses. That's really important as well. Making sure you help in the paint. I can't say that enough. If you see players getting by you and getting to the paint, you need to help out. Extremely, extremely important. Now, right here, as you can see, I'm holding both triggers, staying in front of him. Not taking any chances, not trying to pick the ball. I just stay in front of him, and he's forced to pass it up. Again, just staying in front of him, staying in front of him. With one foot in the lane, he can't drive. He can't go, go anywhere. I stay up on him, shot clock cheese, and I'm rewarded with a block because he was forced to put it up. Now, again, in this example, I'm staying in front of the player. Noah gets the ball, but notice how I didn't chase after who I was defending. I helped double team Noah forced him to pass it and now it's running down the shot clock they're going to be forced to force a shot and they were and it was a miss all because I had I forced him to pass up the ball and I double team Noah instead of having him just have to fake one person again I do the same thing I stay in front he couldn't pass to my player he was forced to take a shot once again staying in front of Heimrich he passes to nowhere because he can't get into the lane. Now watch what happens here. See how I had one foot in the paint? Perfect example. If I was playing the passing lane there, it would have been a drive. But because I was in the lane, he was forced into my body and wasn't able to make the play. Right here is just a quick example of knowing when to play the passing lanes. As you can see, I, I stay in front of who I'm defending, making sure he can't get him the ball. And it forces Snell into a really bad low in the shot clock shot that results in a, another possession. 
Here's another example of knowing when to double team. And like I said, very important. Notice how I use my body to shield him from passing back to Snell. If he does, I'll be able to pick the ball or get back on defense. And it results in a missed shot. Really important, know when to double team. Help out in the paint. Right here, again, I play the passing lanes. I start the double team, use my body to shield him from passing in case he tries to pass out of the double team, and it results in a jump wall. Snell, he's not the greatest passer. He's not the greatest dribbler. He doesn't have the greatest playmaking. So I use my body, and here you can see a really, really good angle in the replay cut here. I stay. I use my body to shield him from passing to Butler. And this looks a little perverted, but you get the idea. And as a result, we get another possession. We actually won that jump ball. Disrupting on defense and causing issues. Momentum, breaking momentum. Right here, again, I double team in the paint. I use my body to shield. And as a result, I'm rewarded with a steal. Being disruptive on defense and causing turnovers. Right here is another great example of using the shuffle to stay in front of the player. I think it's Heimrich. I stay in front of him well, then I play the passing lanes and forces him to pass in, in, pass in the middle to Gibson, which is a really bad pass because there's two defenders there. It actually almost got stolen, and then I was able to get myself in position for the rebound. But check it out. I stayed in front, forced him to pass it to him here, and then look at that. Because I was in the lane, and that could have resulted in a steal if he tried to pass it uh, over to uh, Heimrich again. But I'm staying in the lane, and I force him to make a really bad pass, almost into Kevin Love's hands. But instead, it results with two defenders guarding the paint, and not the greatest play. Yeah, you want to get it inside, but the, no, he, he probably would have liked the teammates to run around a little more and get open. But as a result, forced him to make an ugly shot, and forced yet another miss. Right here, again, as you can see, I use the shuffle to stay in front of Butler, and instead of staying right on top of him, and you'll really see this in the replay, I actually shuffle right to defend the rim. And here you go, you'll see it right here really clearly. Instead of just going and pushing up against him, watch how I align myself to cut him off. Not getting right, right in his face, but just cutting him off so he can't drive, which forces him to pass up the shot. And it almost results in a steal. Yeah, it resulted in a foul, but Kevin Love almost got his hand on it. He had to foul because he, he uh, committed. He took a chance. Right here, another great example of using my shuffle to stay in front of him. So staying in front, staying in front, guarding the lane. He runs all the way to the other side. I'm staying in front, staying in the passing lanes. And look, as soon as I saw Noah take the step back to take the jump shot, because I had good position and I was ready to protect the paint in case he got around Verizhao, I also was in great position for a rebound. And yeah, I, you're leaving your man open there, but whenever there are players on the other side of the paint of the player that you're defending, you can cheat a little bit. You could take a couple of steps in and try to help out, but also, you know, put yourself in a good position for a rebound because if he winds up passing to the guy you're defending, you're going to be able to get back in time. And you'll see that in the next example coming up right here. If you'll notice, I'm defending Butler. I'm defending him well. I'm following him around. I'm staying in the lane. But then I notice that he was uncovered. And yeah, I was in the lane. Yeah, I was committed to protecting the lane, but he was on the other side of the arc, other side of the paint. So when he passed, I had enough time to get back and heavily contest the shot for a miss. So yeah, like I said, it's okay to cheat just as long as it's at the other side. You're de the person you're defending is at the other side of the arc. So that's about it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video on defense. If it helped you out, please remember to hit that like button. And if you like videos like this, please subscribe. And as you could see, we obliterated them. I didn't even play well. You could see by my field goal percentage. And we were still able to do really, really well because of momentum. And as you could see, I'm playing on Hall of Fame. So that's about it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.